Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The hearing upstairs on grid reliability and affordability, and a lot of things we're talking about in here. First off, I want to say that our hearts and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the folks in Maui. Ms. Kamara, I appreciated our conversation yesterday. I could see the, the pain in your face by what your fellow um, citizens there are enduring. And so I want you to know sincerely, we uh, will continue to do all we can and continue to lift you up in thoughts and prayers. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to submit for the record an article from the Institute of Energy Research titled, Hawaii Invest in Renewable Energy Rather Than Wildfire Prevention. Article for the record. All right, we'll take that up at the uh, end of the, at the meeting fine. according yes, to our sir. protocols. Um, Thank you all for taking the time to be here. So I know it's a long trip. Ms. Kamara, it's my understanding that there were plans to build an LNG facility in Hawaii. Uh, why did that project never come to fruition? This was many years ago. Um, we had been working on a proposal for LNG infrastructure uh, in Hawaii to import it into Hawaii. Uh, and that was part of a bridge strategy that we had to get to our renewable goals, to lower costs to our customers uh, while we transition to renewables and also to lower the carbon footprint. Uh, when we were in the process of proposing those plans, uh, the governor of the state of Hawaii at that time had indicated that uh, that that path forward was not appropriate for Hawaii and that the um, focus and the investment should be on the 100, at the time I don't think it was 100% renewables, but the focus should be on achieving the renewables goals um, and putting the investments there. So your, your dispatchable capacity comes from uh, oil fire now and you're using some biodiesel, I understand that. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Your, your dispatchable generation now comes from a, an oil plant and you're using biodiesel and I appreciate that, but I just want for the record that uh, they do have a uh, baseload yes. generation that is dispatchable um, to supplement the renewables. How would you assess natural gas uh, affect the availability uh, of firm generation, the affordability of electricity and the overall level of emissions in Hawaii? Uh, you know, that assessment was done many years ago, and I can't recall now what the impact was. Uh, we had determined at that time that it could significantly reduce uh, the cost of electricity in Hawaii if we were able to implement that at that time. Um, and with sufficient time from when we were proposing it to when we had to achieve our renewable goals, we felt like uh, the investment was worth it and could amortize itself over that period of time uh, to provide that long-term benefit to customers. Yeah, thank you for that. For the record, I would just say that uh, clean burning U.S. produced natural gas has helped the United States lower its carbon emissions. But uh, do you think the impact of this fire will uh, have on the cost of electricity and overall reliability of Hawaiian electric grid uh, will change public opinion on the construction of an LNG facility? That is hard for me to say. Uh, in Hawaii, there. I mean, we haven't talked about LNG for many years in Hawaii. Uh, we you think that conversation will come back up now? It has not. Uh, Hawaii is very focused on um, achieving our current statute of 100% renewables. And uh, as we implement our renewables uh, agenda here, we are achieving uh, projects for example, a solar plus storage project that went into the ground um, last year was at nine cents per kilowatt hour, and that was a third of the cost of what it would cost um, for fossil fuel genera generation uh, based on oil. Uh, so we are continuing to pursue that route, and we are also pursuing firm generation, which we believe is needed to fill the gaps of solar and wind and storage and uh, other renewable resources that we're implementing in Just Hawaii. a side question because it's not in my prepared questions here, but I thought uh, with the volcanic activity in the Hawaiian Islands, is thermal uh, something that's even looked at? Is what? Thermal. Uh, yes, so we have geothermal um, on the big island of Hawaii, and that is a very uh, important resource and a firm resource that uh, we believe is critical to the future of Hawaii, but it's also challenging to get that resource. Yeah, so I'd love to investigate that more. I wanna ask one last question, the Maui uh, Public Utilities. 
Upstairs right now, we're having a hearing on the nation's grid operators about the challenges of reliability on the grid due to state policies and how there has to be a refocus on core missions of grid operators, states, and regulators on reliability. And in some way, given in the clear shortcomings you identified, vegetation management, and your submitted response, we also have to go back and re-examine how and whether state policies uh, to drive energy resource to be 100% renewable may have affected priorities and uh, or your offices and the utility away from focusing on resilience and manage, managing risk, including mitigation fire risk. Was that That's a question to, to me? Yeah. So, or one. yeah. so because of those cost savings that I talked about between that example I gave you, solar plus storage versus the cost of fossil fuels, um, oil that we've been talking about, that cost savings given the high rates that we have in Hawaii, we can take that cost savings and we can invest that in our grid. And so that has been the strategy that we've been employing over the last many years. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm way over time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.